Number 16. Emperor Tamarins The story goes that this particular species of tamarin was so named due to an alleged resemblance to German Emperor Wilhelm II. We're not 100% sure about that. Regardless, these small New World monkeys definitely have a singular appearance with that extreme handlebar moustache. They occur in the Amazon lowlands of South America, as well as lower mountain rainforests. Weighing only about 18 ounces, these are very social creatures that have a playful, gregarious nature in the wild. In captivity, they remain social and are very tolerant of humans and seem to crave a lot of attention. Number 15. Mantled Howlers At some 22 pounds, 10 kilograms, these critters from Central and South America rank as one of the largest monkeys within their range. Given their size, it's interesting to note that they are the only Central American monkeys known to consume mass quantities of leaves. But that diet comes at a cost. Leaves aren't easy to digest, and they don't supply as much energy as other foods, so they spend most of their day sleeping. Like their name suggests, these primates do make amplified calls or howls. The behavior serves as a means of locationing one another while remaining stationary and avoiding confrontation. Most specimens tend to have mostly black coats that are fringed with golden fur flanking their body, hence the mantling. Number 14. Red Shanked Duke Langor Prior to 1967, these animals had never been studied. Native to Vietnam, Thailand and other countries of Indochina, they occupy habitats ranging from rainforest to mountainous terrain rising some 6,600 feet high. They're one of three species known for their unique coloration. Their white mouth, orange face, and black, deep-set eyes give them an appearance that is sometimes described as otherworldly. Even if you don't agree with that assessment, many experts regard them as the most colorful species of primate thanks to those distinctive looks. Number 13. Gelada Baboons These old-world monkeys are found in the highlands of Ethiopia, often at altitudes exceeding 14,000 feet, or over 4,000 meters and that's the only place where they occur in the wild. They're often called baboons, although experts say they actually regard them as members of their own genus. When these beasts get angry, they're pretty much in a class of their own. Their pale eyelids will roll up and the upper lip is pushed up against its nostrils to expose a scary set of fangs. Experts say that those long, sharp canine teeth are often used by males in disputes during mating season. Due to a bright red patch displayed on its chest fur, gelatas are also nicknamed bleeding heart monkeys. Number 12. Mandrills These animals resemble baboons and were once classified as such. Now they occupy a separate genus, along with one other species. Weighing more than 80 pounds, mandrills are the world's heaviest living monkeys. They're also one of the world's most colorful animals, with their faces displaying vivid reds and blues. When they get excited, those colors on their face and fur will flush even brighter. They dwell deep in the rainforests of several African nations, including Cameroon, Congo, and Equatorial Guinea. Within that habitat, they're mostly terrestrial, but will climb the trees at night to sleep. Troops contain more than a dozen females and juveniles and are usually led by an alpha male. On occasion, troops will gather together for large social gatherings that can number 200 or more individuals. Number 11. Tibetan Macaque As the common name suggests, these large primates are found in Tibet, but they've also been observed in northwest China and areas of northern India. Weighing about 43 pounds, 20 kilograms, and 28 inches long, 71 centimeters, they're among the largest monkeys in Asia. Their habitat can range from subtropical forests to higher altitudes of 8,200 feet or 2,500 meters above sea level. Their dense fur is well suited to help them survive those elevations and ranges in color from dark brown to a sandy yellow color. The specimens with lighter colored fur were sometimes compared to a miniature yeti. Number 10. Bald Wakari These monkeys from the Amazon River Basin are bald by virtue of genetics. But they actually do have some long hair, although none of it sprouts on their head. The vivid red coloration makes for a startling sight. 
it results from a lack of pigmentation along with blood vessels that are located close to their skin. The scarlet noggin of this creature has invited comparisons to the red skull from the Captain America comics and movies. If you can see a resemblance, let us know in the comments below. Number 9. Debraza's Monkey Weighing about 15 pounds, 7 kilograms, males of this species are about twice as large as females. The Old World monkeys are one of the most widespread tree-dwelling primates in Africa. Named for a European explorer, their size and coloration wouldn't seem suitable for camouflage. Yet, these animals are very adept at staying hidden from humans and predators. In fact, they're so reclusive that no one has been able to get an accurate estimate of the animal's population within their range. Since they spend so much time near the water, they're often called swamp monkeys, and troops of them are sometimes observed swimming. Number 8. Golden Langur One of India's most endangered primate species can be found within a 60 mile in the country's northeastern region. Its golden coat creates a memorable contrast to its ebony face, but the fur changes colour with the seasons. While the Western world first learned of their existence in the 1950s, these animals have long been considered sacred by many locals in the Himalayas. Number 7. Celebes Crested Macaques These Old World critters are found in Sulawesi, also known as Celebes. They also occur on smaller islands nearby, and all of them are listed as critically endangered. At around 23 pounds, 10 kilograms, it's one of the smaller macaque species, and spends most of the day foraging on the ground. To be honest, we chose this species more for the strange appearance of one individual specimen. He made international headlines in 2011 when pictures of a monkey selfie were published. A nature photographer set up a camera with a remote shutter trigger, which was later activated by the curious primate. The unusual selfie inspired countless memes and turned the crested macaque into an internet celebrity. It also triggered a contentious lawsuit over who owned the photo's copyright the photographer or the monkey. People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, Peter, instigated the legal action, but the photographer later won the case. Do you agree with that decision? Number 6. White-Faced Saki One of the more distinctive faces on our list belongs to these primates found in South America. They stay on the ground while foraging, but at night, they'll sleep in trees that rise some 66 feet high, 20 meters, where leaves hide them from predators. They have a varied diet consisting of fruits, insects, and small birds. They're known to feed on bats and can crack open nuts and shells with their large canine teeth. Some people have compared the Saki's facial coloration to that of the spectacled bear, which is also found in regions of South America. Let us know if you think there might be a connection. Number 5. Golden Snub-Nosed Monkeys these animals thrive at elevations of around 11,500 feet or 3,500 meters above sea level. At those extremes, they have adapted to survive frigid temperatures better than any other non-human primate known to date. They're endemic to forested regions of southwest China and are not often glimpsed outside of their range. On rare occasions, the Chinese government has allowed the animals to be displayed in zoos outside the country. Their golden fur and blue-skinned faces make them some of the most exotic-looking animals on the planet. There's a theory that these monkeys lost their noses as a way of avoiding frostbite, given their cold habitat. Number 4. Lazula Monkey These primates weren't discovered in rainforests of the Democratic Republic of Congo until 2007. Five years later, they were officially confirmed as only the second new species of African monkey found since 1984. Their most distinctive feature by far are their eyes, which some people say have a quality that is unsettlingly human-like. Its other distinctive trait is a large bear patch on their backside, which has a vivid blue coloration. Locals say the animal has long been known to hunters and are closely related to a species known as owl-faced monkeys. Number 3. Hamadryas Baboons These primates are also called sacred baboons because they were once revered by the ancient Egyptians as a god of learning. These days, they're no longer found in Egypt, but the hardy animals do occur in Ethiopia and Saudi Arabia, among other regions. They're the northernmost dwelling baboon species, which provides a notable advantage. They encounter fewer natural predators than in Central or Southern Africa where many of their cousins reside. 
Weighing around 66 pounds, 30 kilograms, they're strongly built and large-bodied. But they can still fall prey to animals including leopards and hyenas. Even though they occasionally find shelter in trees, they prefer to dwell in areas near high cliffs that are close to a water source. Groups of several hundred individuals are known to gather at a time, possibly to celebrate their conservation status. These animals maintain stable populations and their numbers continue to grow. Number 2. Pygmy Marmoset Monkeys There are 22 species of marmoset monkeys and this is the smallest one. And with adults rarely weighing more than 3.5 ounces, 100 grams, pygmy marmosets are recognised as the smallest true monkeys in the entire world. Including the tail, they measure about 9 inches long and are found in the Amazon Basin rainforests of South America. Given their small dimensions, they can still leap about 16 feet, 5 metres from one tree branch to another. Other arboreal adaptations include sharp claws for clinging to trees and an ability to rotate their heads 180 degrees. Did you know that this little primate is sometimes called the pocket monkey? That's a reference to them being so small they can fit in one's breast pocket. They're highly sought after in the pet trade and that's one of the biggest threats to this species. As we head to our final segment, don't forget to monkey around with the like and subscribe buttons. Click on both if you like this episode. Number 1. Proboscis Monkeys These old world monkeys are endemic to the island of Borneo in Southeast Asia. Since proboscis is another term for nose, you might say their distinguishing physical trait is as plain as the nose on their face. The hooters of males can extend an impressive 4 inches, 10 centimetres, and may play a role in mating rituals. Researchers say the nose amplifies the sound of mating calls and might attract more females. Number 14. Wind Cave National Park The indigenous Lakota people call this cave the hole that breathes cool air. Established in 1903 by President Theodore Roosevelt, this location in South Dakota was among the first national parks in the United States, and it holds the honour of being the world's first cave ever declared as a national park. At nearly 150 miles (240 kilometers, it's recognised as one of the longest caves on the planet. Underground expeditions have revealed intricate patterns of mineral formations called boxwork or frostwork that are found nowhere else. Above ground, the park hosts a diverse ecosystem that includes bison, bobcats and prairie dogs. While it's free to explore the parklands, a fee is charged for cave tours. Some of those tours are said to be strenuous and involve crawling, so know before you go. Number 13. Hingol National Park Located in Pakistan, this park contains many unusual features including a mud volcano. Established in 1988, the park sprawls about 2,400 square miles or 6,100 square kilometres and contains habitats ranging from arid subtropical forests to mountainous areas. It's home to many animal species including pangolins, geckos, pelicans and frogs. But the park is probably best known for an imposing, non-living attraction. The Sphinx of Baluchistan is a natural rock formation so named for its resemblance to the Great Sphinx of Giza in Egypt. Its appearance was sculpted by rains and coastal winds over millions of years. Number 12. Arches National Park More than 2,000 naturally occurring sandstone arches can be found at this national park in eastern Utah, so the name isn't a coincidence. Since the 1970s, more than 40 arches have fallen due to the effects of erosion. But don't worry, there is still plenty of amazing arches to be seen. Some of the better known sites include Balanced Rock, that's a stone structure about the size of three school buses. The double arch, which are two arches that share the same end, is another landmark. And this delicate arch, which is not only the most recognisable arch in the park, it is well known around the world. In 2018, more than 1.5 million people visited this park. Number 11. Glacier National Park the name of this huge location is a direct reference to the remains of glaciers that formed in northwestern Montana during the last ice age. The park is located on the border of Canada and the US, comprising more than 1 million acres, that's 4,000 square kilometers. 
which includes portions of two mountain ranges. The unspoiled ecosystem includes sprawling forests, more than 700 lakes, hundreds of waterfalls, 1,000 different plant species and hundreds of animals. In addition to moose, birds and grizzly bears, you'll find mountain goats, Canadian lynxes and wolverines. In 2018, nearly 3 million visitors were attracted by this pristine wilderness which features numerous historic landmarks and the Highline Trail which follows the Continental Divide. Here's an FYI though, if you want to see the glaciers, visit the park ASAP. In the 19th century, about 150 glaciers were estimated to exist in the area. By 2010, only about 25 remained. And if current climate patterns stay the same, experts say that none of the active glaciers will remain by 2030. Number 10. Dry Tortugas National Park about 70 miles or 108 kilometers from Key West, Florida, you'll find seven dry Tortugas Islands in the Gulf of Mexico. They're the most isolated of the Florida Keys, and the blend of remote tropical ecosystems with historical landmarks makes this national park particularly unique. Its centerpiece is Fort Jefferson, a huge coastal fortress from the 19th century that was never finished. Built with more than 16 million bricks, it's the largest brick masonry structure found in the Western Hemisphere. You can only get to this location by boat or seaplane, but it's worth the effort. It attracts more than 60,000 visitors each year who arrive to enjoy activities including snorkeling, scuba diving, bird watching and camping. The name dates to the 16th century when Spanish explorers caught so many sea turtles, they named the islands after the reptiles. Tortuga is Spanish for turtle, and since the islands contained no surface fresh water, the animals were said to be dry. Number 9. Mammoth Cave National Park According to legend, Europeans first discovered this site in the late 18th century, when hunters chased a bear into the cave entrance. While that is uncertain, this much is clear. This national park in Kentucky contains the world's longest known cave systems, with over 400 miles, 640 kilometers of chambers and passageways mapped so far. That's nearly twice the length of the world's second largest cave system in Mexico. It was named a national park in 1941 as part of an effort to preserve the caves, within which new discoveries are made every year. For visitors who don't mind some subterranean activities, the park offers guided tours that can range from one to six hours long. During that time, you might encounter some of the several bat species that inhabit the area. About 500,000 visitors enjoy these tours each year. Overall, Mammoth Cave National Park attracts more than 2 million visitors annually. FYI, the cave system's name is a reference to its immense size. No fossils of the extinct woolly mammoth have ever been located there. Number 8. Kruger National Park Located in South Africa, this established covers nearly 5 million acres, that's over 20,000 square kilometers, and it contains the most species of large mammals than any other game reserve found in Africa. The big five game animals all reside here. Those are elephants, rhinos, buffalo, leopards, and lions, all of which call the park home. That's not to mention hippos, giraffes, Nile crocodiles, and more than 500 species of birds. That provides visitors the chance to get about as close to all of the epic wildlife as possible. Number 7. Great Sand Dunes National Park Located in Colorado's Sangre de Cristo mountain range, this might not seem like the place to find the tallest sand dunes in North America. The formations are scattered over 233 square miles, 603 square kilometers, and some of them can top 750 feet, 229 meters. Human activity in the region has been dated to 11,000 years ago and has included Native American tribes, European explorers, homesteaders and buffalo soldiers. Today, more than 440,000 visitors arrive annually to experience dazzling views of alpine tundra, lakes and mountain peaks that rise more than 13,000 feet high or nearly 4,000 meters. Along with the impressive views, the park is home to various animal species like bison, black bears and sandhill cranes. Among the most popular activities is hiking throughout the dunes. But choose your seasons wisely. In summer, temperatures can hit 150 degrees Fahrenheit, 
or 66 Celsius. Number 6. Komodo National Park Should your bucket list include seeing the world's largest lizards in person, here's an idea. Visit the Komodo National Park in Indonesia. The park was founded in 1980 to protect the Komodo dragon. Other terrestrial animals found at the park include water buffalo, macaque monkeys, and various vipers and pythons. The area is abundant in marine life, and surrounding waters contain whale sharks, ocean sunfish, manta rays, and even blue whales. Number 5. Cinque Terre National Park Located in Italy's smallest national park are cliffside towns with vibrantly coloured villages that look as if they could have come from a fairy tale. The five medieval towns are located on the Italian Riviera and offer visitors plenty of natural scenery, sandy beaches and coastal hiking trails. Forested areas are filled with wild boar and foxes. Did you know Cinque Terre was established in 1999 and was intended to emphasise the relationships between humans and the environment? Number 4. Zanji National Geopark the amazing, multi-hued Danxia Mountains are found in this national park of China. The area contains nearly 700 walls, pillars, peaks and stone bridges. Even temples are featured on some of the mountains. The awesome colours range from dark reds to pale blues to vibrant greens. Experts say that as the reddish sandstone was eroded, the mountains were formed over millions of years, creating the unusual landscape. The geopark has become a popular tourist attraction, and in 2010, the landforms were added to the World Heritage List. Number 3. Plitvis Lakes National Park A lot of people think the Garden of Eden exists today, and it can be found in Croatia. Plitvis Lakes National Park is filled with amazing paradisical sites. The park is one of the best-known attractions in Croatia, where it's often referred to as the local version of the legendary garden. Some of the world's most awesome waterfalls, along with 16 individual lakes, are contained within the park. The complex system of lakes and rivers are the result of limestone deposits that created natural dams, and that helped to form the caves and waterfalls that are located there. Did you know Plitvis Lakes is Southeast Europe's oldest national park? Number 2. Cheren National Park It would be really easy to mistake this location for the Grand Canyon in the US. While Cheren Canyon is grand, it's actually located some 7,000 miles or over 11,000 kilometers east of Arizona's natural wonder. It's found in the Cheren National Park of Kazakhstan and has earned the nickname of the Grand Canyon's little brother. While its fiery red sandstone formations and raging river stretch for some 56 miles, 90 kilometers, that still comes up short against the Elder Canyon which stretches for some 277 miles, 446 kilometers. Another difference is that unlike the Grand Canyon, its little brother is not heavily commercialized, meaning visitors often have to bring their own food and water. Which one of these epic parks would you most like to visit? Tell us in the comments and be sure to like and subscribe. Number 1. Uluru Kata Chota National Park The spectacular formation sometimes called Ayers Rock probably needs no introduction. It's one of the world's most recognisable landmarks and is a major icon of Australia and occupies this protected area in the Northern Territory. The park's name not only refers to Uluru, but Kata Chorta. That's a collection of 36 large, domed rock formations located about 25 miles, 40 kilometres away. Covering around 512 square miles, 1,326 square kilometres, the park was established in 1958 and is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Both of these unique formations are thought to have formed some 350 million years ago, and humans may have occupied the area for some 10,000 years. Although it doesn't appear so, the barren landscape contains one of the world's most vital terrestrial ecosystems. The region's extreme conditions have produced many rare plant species that are rare and endemic to the region. Animals in the region include lizards, raptors, wallabies, and feral camels. You might not have connected these animals with Oz, but they were imported during the 19th century for use in transportation and construction. By some estimates, there are more than one million of them roaming about. Number 9. Giant Grasshoppers 
People have been terrified of giant insects since the beginning of time. But what about a grasshopper the size of a human? There is no way. But in pictures from the 1930s, the following headline appeared on the front page of the Toma Monitor Herald from Wisconsin. Apparently, there was an extreme invasion of biblical proportions of giant grasshoppers. The story goes like this. Farmer A.L. Butts had put some very special plant food around his orchard trees. Suddenly, grasshoppers were found around three feet in length, breaking his tree limbs and destroying his orchard. There are also pictures of hunters going out to capture the large beasts. This article from 1937 goes on to insinuate that the story was all a put on, to trick and entertain their readers. But this was all on page four, and most people didn't make it to the end. The pictures have been proven to be photoshopped, even in 1937, and you thought clickbait was new. However, while grasshoppers might not get to three feet long, the giant wetter is considered to be the world's biggest grasshopper. Just ask Guinness World Records. Found only in New Zealand, there are around 70 species of wetter that look kind of like a cross between a cricket and a cockroach. Park ranger Mark Moffat on Little Barrier Island, New Zealand, found a gargantuan giant wetter with the wingspan of about 7 inches. Unlike most people, Moffat was pretty excited and gave her a carrot, like a little bunny rabbit. The wetter is an endangered species, so it was actually a discovery to be celebrated instead of haunted by, as these guys aren't the cuddliest looking things. Number 8. Zeus the Dog Although Zeus died in 2014, he's recognised as the biggest dog in recent history. A replacement for him has not yet been found. Zeus was born in 2008, a Great Dane from Otsego, Michigan, and was known by all as being the Guinness Book of World Records World's Tallest Dog for two whole years. In fact, now deceased, he still holds the record in the history books. He was 7 foot 5 inches with his legs stretched out and 3 foot 8 inches from his foot to his back. He was good natured and much loved, so it was hard to hear of his passing in 2014. He was a big dog with a big heart who died of old age. To get an idea as to how big he was, take a look at a donkey. He was about that size. He loved to sit on his owner's lap and visit children's hospitals where allowed as a therapy dog and to entertain children. He was the hero the world needed at the time. Now, if only we could find another like him, as in my opinion, his work is not done yet. Number 7. Darius the Rabbit You may have heard of the world's longest rabbit, but seeing him is a different story. He stands at 4 foot 4 inches long and is big enough that many confuse him for a dog. If you think rabbits are cute, you're right, there is no size of rabbit that is not cute. The average rabbit weighs about 5 pounds, but Darius weighs 10 times that much at nearly 50 pounds. The only rabbit that comes close to his size is his child, Jeff, who measured 3 foot 8 inches as a young kitten. Both father and son love playing with their friend the boxer dog, who is not much bigger than them. The two are continental giant rabbits and were nearly bigger than their 8 year old owner, Ava, in 2016. It is believed that by the time that Jeff is Darius' age, he will outweigh him for sure. This would make Jeff, hands down, the world's biggest rabbit. The rabbits are so large that they eat 2,000 carrots and 700 apples every year to keep up with their metabolism and weight. Not to mention, this food is aside from their regular boxer dog bowl full of rabbit food every day. If you want to put these guys into perspective, they're pretty much the size of a German Shepherd only they eat more. And now for number 6, but first, if you're new to Epic Wildlife, welcome, and be sure to subscribe. Number 6, Medusa the Snake. For those who are squeamish around snakes, back away now. To others, say hello to the world's largest snake held in captivity. Her name is Medusa, and she is a reticulated python. She is owned by Full Moon Productions Incorporated in Kansas City, Missouri. In 2011, when found, she was 25 foot 2 inches long, granting her the title of the world's largest snake by Guinness Book of World Records. On average, the python doesn't get more than 15 foot long, but Medusa surpassed the average by a long shot. When she was 10 years old, it took 15 men to hold her for a picture, considering her length and weight of 350 pounds. 
Every other week, she eats rabbits, hogs, and deer whole. The largest python ever caught was 32 feet 10 inches, but it didn't survive in captivity, making Medusa the largest to survive in a domesticated state. It seems she is strong, sturdy, and that the Full Moon Productions crew in KC know what they're doing. Where is she today? Starring in The Edge of Hell Haunted House in Kansas City. She's a great performer and knows when it's showtime. She isn't forced to perform, but loved the show. She sits perfectly still in an elongated state for everybody to look at. Perhaps she snaps at the viewers just for show as well. Number 5. Lolong the Croc If snakes aren't your cup of tea, then maybe crocodiles will be. Lolong was the largest crocodile in captivity on record. He was a saltwater crocodile that reached a whopping 20 feet 3 inches in 2,370 pounds. Sadly, he didn't live long as he died in 2013 from both pneumonia and cardiac arrest. But before that, he was caught in a creek in the province of Aung San del Sur in the Philippines in 2011. If not for the government unit that caught him, it might have been hard to transport the guy. But with the help of the unit and the crocodile hunters of Palawan, they secured him and took him to be measured. But it took over a hundred people to bring him onto land. At the time, he was old and feisty, but at 50 years old, who would want to be disturbed after such a long run in the free world? But it had to be done. He was under accusations of eating a missing fisherman as well as a 12-year-old girl, not to mention countless water buffaloes. The Animal Kingdom Foundation Incorporated tried to get the government to let him go after no human remains were found in his stomach. But the danger was too great, plus he was being used as a tourist attraction. This made the Animal Kingdom Foundation furious as they believed he was not treated well at all. It is believed that this was the reason for his declining health and eventual death. Number 4. Big Bill the Pig Big Bill is the biggest pig in history who weighed 2,552 pounds. He was a member of the Poland China breed, owned by Ilias Buford Butler of Jackson, Tennessee. His stomach was so big that it touched the ground. Sadly, he broke his leg due to excessive weight and had to be put down. But he went down a legend, feeding the entire state of Tennessee for a month. Okay, that was a bad joke. Also, I didn't tell you that he lived in 1933. But since no pig has come even close to his record, he still holds it. He was 5 feet tall and 9 feet long. I mean, come on! But to be fair, the biggest living pig is unknown, because every county fair in the world knows that there's hardly a use in weighing their pigs if they can't come close to Big Bill's record. I mean, who is big enough to break their own leg? That takes dedication. Across the world, Big Bill is more famous than Zuckerman's famous pig. You know, Wilbur from Charlotte's Web? Now that's a nice pig. In fact, there's a good chance a lot of the book was inspired by this pig. The book that came out 30 years after Big Bill's run at the county fair. Number 3. Blossom the Cow Blossom is, to this day, recognised by Guinness World Records as the tallest cow that ever lived. She was a giant Holstein who stood just over 6 feet 2 inches tall. Unfortunately, like many animals, she died much earlier than she should have in 2015. The cause of death? Leg problems from her weight. At least she did make it to age 13, which is quite the feat for a cow her size. The owner, Patty Meads Hansen, has a few words to say in her honour. The funny thing about Blossom was how unaffected she was by all the attention that seemed to surround her. As long as she had her oats, daily chin rubs and her ear scratches, life was good. What a nice cow. The owner's father raised the cow from 8 weeks old, but never thought she could grow up to sit in the Guinness World Book of Records. Blossom won over the previous record holder from over a hundred years ago, but under an inch. That was a close race, but the Holstein just wouldn't die until she broke the record, which she did officially weeks before her passing. She will forever be the world's favourite, sweetest large cow. And what a name to go with the title. Number 2. Goliath Bird Eater This huge spider is about the size of a dinner plate. You can see where it gets its name as the Goliath Bird Eater Spider. They are common in northern South America and are famous for being the largest spider in the world. It is named a bird eater due to the fact it's big enough to eat a bird. In fact, the explorer who found it saw it chowing down on a hummingbird. 
but they actually prefer to eat earthworms and toads and lizards. Though, if, in a dire situation, they will eat birds. As hard as it is, they will, along with squirrels, mice, and rats. They pretty much eat anything you don't want in your house that is smaller than a chihuahua. Though, it's possible, the bird eater could be a lapdog eater too. Who knows? A spider's gotta eat. But don't worry, you won't see them unless you live near a swamp or murky waters. But if you do, you can just go spider hunting, because many claim that cooking the urticating hairs off and roasting it in banana leaves is delicious. The oddest thing about them is that the females live for about 20 years, whereas the males don't live more than 5. Like a boss. Number 1. Bandit the Raccoon Hate raccoons digging through your trash? Well, what about the world's biggest raccoon? Don't worry, he's only in the history books and the Guinness Book now. Sadly, he died in 2004 at 10 years old. But raccoons are sometimes cute, you have to admit, and they do know how to wash their hands. But during his time, Bandit wasn't known as the world's biggest raccoon, but rather the world's fattest raccoon. Isn't that the way it goes? He had a good excuse though. He was born with a bad thyroid gland. He wasn't adopted by humans per se, but a dog who took him in and raised him up as another pup. He had a mother and many siblings growing up. But after a while, he was taken in by a human who spoiled him rotten. He gave him chips, fruit loops, cheese curls and french fries and everything else he wanted. Surely this helped his thyroid problem. By 2001, he weighed 64.4 pounds and by the end of his life, he weighed 70 pounds. He was labelled the junk food crazed critter and the largest raccoon in the world by the Guinness Book of World Records in 1999. At the time, he was a fan favourite, featured on the then cable television station, The Food Network. But all good things come to an end, and in 2004 he was put down when early signs of thyroid cancer caught up to him. Did these animals steal your heart in any way? Then keep watching for more. Number 10. Immortality. There's a jellyfish that defies the typical rules of the animal kingdom and possesses immortal qualities. Known by the scientific name of Teredopsis dorini, it has a very unique advantage of never reaching an end of life stage. It is the only known creature that can technically live forever. These tiny creatures which have up to 90 tentacles only grow up to 0.18 inches long. The appropriately nicknamed immortal jellyfish ages into adulthood. Then, it mates with other jellyfish. Afterwards, it reverts back to its younger form. In other words, a sexually immature stage, and starts its life anew. After it goes back into this state, it'll start aging again, until it goes and mates. Then the jellyfish will revert back to its juvenile state, and so the cycle repeats. This repetitive cycle is what makes the creature immortal. While it may be killed by disease or another animal, it doesn't die by aging. Scientists are still learning about the immortal jellyfish's life cycle, as they've only just observed it in laboratories, not in its natural environment. Number 9. Real Wolverine Nicknamed the horror frog and the hairy frog, Trio Betrachus robustus produces its cat-like extended claws by deliberately breaking the bones in its hind feet, causing them to puncture its toe pads. The creature most likely engages in the self-mutilation of sorts as a defense mechanism or when it feels threatened. Scientists aren't sure how, but the frog can also retract its DIY claws. There's no weapon that pulls the claws back inside the toe pads, leading experts to believe that perhaps they slide back in naturally when the creature relaxes. Being amphibians, it would not be surprising if some parts of the wound heal and the tissue is regenerated. Scientist David Blackburn explained to New Scientist in 2008. Blackburn studied dead specimens of the creatures with his college at Harvard University's Museum of Comparative Zoology. These frogs are apparently so feared in their native environments, in Cameroon, the locals hunt them with spears and machetes to avoid their claws. Number 8. Super Speed The peregrine falcon is the world's fastest animal, diving at speeds of up to 242 miles per hour. Typically, the bird flies between 40 and 60 miles per hour. It utilizes its super fast speed to swoop in for the kill when hunting. 
by tucking its wings in and forming its body into an extremely aerodynamically efficient teardrop shape. The peregrine falcon has several other biological advantages when it comes to flying, including an enlarged keel or breastbone, enabling more muscle growth and flight power. Its pointed wings allow for maximum lift, speed and manoeuvrability. The bird's slim, stiff feathers result in minimal drag, especially compared to avian species with limp or loose feathers. Perhaps the most important features that facilitate the peregrine falcon's amazing flying speed are its respiratory and circulatory systems. While many birds can't breathe while flying at half the peregrine falcon's top speed, it inhales and exhales with ease at over 200 miles per hour. Its heart also beats fast and strong, pumping oxygen throughout the bird's body at the necessary rate for flying comfortably without getting tired at such high speeds. Number 7. Die and come back to life. The wood frog is broadly distributed throughout North America. Every year, these creatures freeze, but not entirely solid for up to seven months. When a wood frog senses cold temperatures on the way, two thirds of its body turns to ice. Its heart stops beating, its blood sugar levels drastically increase, and its blood flow stops. For the first week of this process, wood frogs freeze at night and thaw out during the day. Once freezing temperatures have settled in for the season, however, they freeze and remain frozen until spring. While frozen, wood frogs can withstand temperature as low as zero degrees Fahrenheit. For many animals, freezing ultimately leads to death. And while the wood frog is essentially dead in certain ways while in this state, freezing is, ironically, more or less a survival mechanism. Experts believe that freezing enables more of the glycogen stored in the frog's liver to be converted into glucose, which keeps the cells hydrated and keeps them alive during the winter. When spring returns, the frogs simply thaw out and return to life. Number 6. Seeing Heat Snakes are already well known for their refined senses, such as detecting scents with their tongues. But in the case of the pit viper and few other species like certain pythons and boas, their senses go even beyond that. Their skin and nerves are so refined that they're actually able to detect the very heat given off by an animal. These snakes have holes on their faces called pit organs, which contain nerve cells that act as infrared receptors, detecting radiation as heat rather than light. This process enables the creature to see the silhouette of their prey in the dark. In other words, the pit organs work essentially like a built-in infrared camera. In addition to being useful for hunting at night, pit organs come in handy for detecting prey in cold environments. Number 5. Super Strength The dung beetle is the world's strongest bug, mainly because of how much weight it can move in proportion to its own size. On average, a dung beetle is less than half an inch long, but it can pull roughly 1,141 times its own weight. Or, as Discovery Magazine explained, the equivalent of a 154-pound person dragging six fully loaded double-decker buses. In a 2010 study, scientists Rob Nell and Lee Simmons discovered that the dung beetle's strength correlates with its sex life, as evidenced by the frequent battles that males get into over females. Weaker males aren't at a complete disadvantage against other dung beetles. They tend to be more fertile, thus increasing their chances of fathering a female's eggs. Number 4. Precognition The ability of any creature to see the future is widely debated and doubted among humans, but evidence suggests that dogs are equipped with precognitive abilities. Many dog owners who have experienced their beloved canines knowing when it's time for dinner or wait at the door for other household members to return home from work would probably say they already knew this. Science is just starting to catch up with the idea of dogs being able to predict the future, and so far, studies show that dogs really do seem to have an uncanny sense of time. Many believe that dogs can sense danger, including medical emergencies and natural disasters, and that they can see or sense ghosts and other supernatural phenomena. There are also cases showing that dogs have a navigational sixth sense of sorts, where canines find their way back to their families after being separated from them. Other research has yielded similar results for elephants, indicating that they can predict when a watering hole will run dry. Number 3. Regeneration Believe it or not, regeneration is actually a fairly common superpower in the animal kingdom. From sea creatures who can regrow limbs to lizards who can regenerate their tails, healing abilities are surprisingly present in the animal kingdom. But one animal, sloths, have a more advanced form of regeneration. As you probably already know, 
sloths are extremely slow. This makes them extremely vulnerable to predators. Fortunately for them, science has shown that sloths can survive pretty extreme injuries, mainly because the animal has a slow metabolism and because its fur contains numerous antibacterial agents. As a result, wounds that usually kill other animals rarely become infected and typically heal in a month or less. While it's not impossible to kill a sloth, the odds of one dying from an infected injury are low. Number 2. Spider Silk Production The spider's superpower is its ability to produce extremely strong, giant webs which it uses to ensnare its enemies. This talent is especially evident among Caestrostis darwini, or the Darwin's bark spider. The anchor strands of their webs measure as long as 82 feet across, long enough to span a stream, river, or perhaps even a tiny lake. And their webs occupy up to 30 square feet. The strength of the spider silk was nothing new to scientists when they tested Darwin's bark spider silk, but they were surprised by how durable it is. It's over 10 times stronger than Kevlar and more than twice as tough as other known types of silk, and is also much more elastic. This elasticity appears to be the key to the silk's strength. It's about twice as stretchy as the silk of other species. Darwin's bark spider was discovered in 2001. It weaves some of the largest webs in the animal kingdom, usually over water, which enables the entrapment of various insects, including mayflies, bees, and dragonflies. Some researchers believe the spider silk has potential commercial value due to its lightweight yet durable properties. Further study may also help producers mimic these qualities. Number 1. Sound Mimicry There are two ground-dwelling Australian bird species called the lyrebird. One of them, known as Menura novella Hollande, or superb lyrebird of southeastern Australia, is well known for its uncanny ability to imitate rather complex noises, especially the sounds of other birds. In a 2012 study, researchers from the Australian National University learned that the lyrebird's accuracy is so spot on, sometimes it even deceives the original source of the noise it's mimicking. The study also found that the species spends a lot of its time, up to 80%, copying the sounds of other animals. An individual male lyrebird often memorises the calls of between 20 and 25 other avian species. This clever bird does take shortcuts to master its impressive skills, as the research team learned. We found that the lyrebirds were accurately replicating the structure of shrike thrush songs, but they sang an abridged version containing fewer repeated notes than the songs sung by the real shrike thrushes, stated Anastasia Dezeel, a then PhD student at the Research School of Biology, which is part of ANU's College of Medicine, Biology and Environment. Number 11. Arashiyama Bamboo Grove Located in Kyoto, Japan, this bamboo grove is one of the most photographed sites in the city. A little in the outskirts, this place has been a popular relaxing destination since the year 794 AD, when nobles would come to enjoy the natural setting. Arashiyama is very popular during the fall and during cherry blossom season. The bamboo groves provide a sense of peace and relaxation. There are paths that cut through so you can go for a nice walk or bicycle ride. When there is a light wind, the tall bamboo gently sways back and forth as the sun peeks through the canopy. It is close to the entrance of the Tenruji temple and can get very busy, so it is best to go first thing in the morning when it's still peaceful. As soon as you can, you'll just have to go and enjoy the magic for yourself. Number 10. Antelope Canyon If you think water and rock don't mix, you'd be wrong. In fact, they combine to produce the most stunning geological results, as Antelope Canyon shows. Located a stone's throw, see what I did there, from the city of Page in Arizona, it's both ancient and modern. What do I mean by that? Well, the site, lived on and owned by the Navajo Nation, is not only part of history, but also a popular tourist destination. On top of that, it's insta-famous. Antelope Canyon is famous for its elaborate orange and red colouring. Stunning shafts of light shine down, creating amazing photo ops. The site is comprised of two sandstone canyons, formed by erosion from powerful flash flood water. The name of these types of features is Slot Canyon, called that because of their long, narrow and deep shaping. The flood water usually travels from miles away and is incredibly powerful. 
These canyons are beautiful but deadly, as tragically demonstrated in 1997. No less than 11 people were killed when a wall of water struck the area. Visitors are drawn to the location because of the many pictures taken and uploaded to social media. One of these snaps is actually the most expensive on record, Phantom by Peter Lick, which sold for a cool 6.5 million. Number 9. Blue Hole When sinkholes are mentioned in the news, it's typically to do with some kind of disaster on land. However, marine sinkholes are different, and the amazing Great Blue Hole of Belize is a treasure trove of marine life and ancient history. This bluest of blue wonders, formed from limestone and measuring 984 feet across and 400 feet deep, is thought to date to around the last ice age. That makes it approximately 14,000 years old. How do we know it's that old? Because the company Aquatica Submarines took a trip down there in 2018. They wanted to create a 3D map of this beautiful and mysterious place, and what they discovered did not disappoint. For example, the varied forms of life stop short at 90 metres. Owing to the presence of a hydrogen sulphide layer, there are things under that layer, but they're dead, as the layer cut off their oxygen. While the remains include conches and crabs, they also sadly included two human beings. Experts also saw stalactites down there, meaning the place was once a cave that was eventually submerged by rising water. There's actually limited time available to check it out, as sand is gradually building up inside the hole. Balez's Great Blue Hole is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, but that doesn't mean it escapes the forces of nature. And now for number 8, but first be sure to subscribe to Epic Wildlife if you haven't already, and let me know which place you'd like to visit in the comments below. Number 8. Cretaceous Paleogene Boundary Geological wonders can really surprise us. They aren't all huge chunks of rock or eye-catching fossils and stuff like that. Some can be pretty small, but highly significant to our understanding of what goes on with planet Earth. A classic case is the K-PG boundary, or the Cretaceous-Paleogene boundary. This sediment layer, about the width of a human finger, is an astonishing 66 million years old. You can find it running through rock all around the world, from the Netherlands to Alberta, Canada. It represents the end of the Mesozoic Era, and the beginnings of the Cenozoic Era. How do we know this? Well, although it looks like a little thing, the KPG boundary makes a big splash in an archaeological sense. That's because it records the time where it's believed a 6-9 to nine mile wide meteorite hit the Earth, causing the extinction of the dinosaurs. Three quarters of life is thought to have been wiped out, with the boundary appearing to be evidence of this. The famous Alvarez hypotheses of 1980 first put forward the idea of such a catastrophic event, and the boundary contains high levels of iridium, a chemical linked to space rocks. Sounds like he had a pretty strong argument. Number 7. Crystal Cave The Sierra de Nica mountain in Mexico is an impressive enough geological spectacle as is, but it's what's beneath the mountain that interests us most. At the start of the century, a mining company went down there to drain the area, looking for stuff to make a profit on. Situated in Chihuahua, Mexico, the underground mine is highly automated, ore is crushed and transported to the surface by a conveyor belt. 60,000 litres of water per minute is pumped out of the mine to prevent flooding, and groundwater is just 110 metres below the surface. Mine operations continue 740 metres below groundwater level. What they discovered came as a surprise. Giant crystals. When I say giant, I'm not exaggerating. At their biggest, 40 foot in length and 13 foot wide, they look like something out of science fiction. Made from the mineral, gypsum, they formed naturally in super steamy 136 degree temperatures. Of course, what's good for crystals isn't great for humans. The level of humidity down there is dangerous. Needless to say, this attraction did not welcome casual visitors. The air temperature can go up to 122 degrees Fahrenheit, with humidity of 90 degrees, making it one of the most extreme climates on the planet. Not many were allowed inside to begin with. The cave in which the crystals were found is in a U-shape, measuring 98 feet long and 32 feet wide. If you wanted to check out the crystals for yourself, you're out of luck. 2017 saw operations stop, with water flooding the area once again to protect and preserve the crystals. 
Today, scientists hope for a Mexican government to agree to request UNESCO World Heritage status in the hopes of protecting these unique crystals for future generations to study and enjoy. Number 6. Door to Hell The Devasa Crater, or Door to Hell, is located in the country of Turkmenistan. Most of Turkmenistan is made up of the Karakum Desert. What better place for such a fiery, geological marvel? We should say the door to hell isn't a door as such, it's a blazing pit that's been burning for decades. The crater is 230 feet wide and 98 feet deep. The temperature down below is an eyebrow frying 750 degrees Fahrenheit. Why is a pit burning in the first place? The answer lies somewhat stinkily with methane gas. No one is certain how the crater came to be. Some believed it formed naturally, whereas others have more colourful stories. Apparently, in 1971, a group of geologists from the Soviet Union were looking for either gas or oil under the sand. When they started poking around, the ground collapsed and methane was released. No one wants methane in their lungs, so they decided to set fire to it and burn it off. All this time later, the flames are still raging. Soil collected from the door to hell revealed microscopic traces of life existing in the crater. The reason we know so much about the interior is through Canadian hothead George Coronas. In 2013, he was lowered into the pit where he spent a short period of time checking out the bowels of hell. Better him than us. Number 5. Fumaroles Yellowstone There's a lot going on beneath the Earth's crust. For example, intense heat generated at Yellowstone comes from the volcanic forces underground. Wyoming didn't know what hit it a whopping 600,000 years back. A huge explosion resulted in the Yellowstone fumaroles. They're a beautiful sight to be sure, but Mother Nature made them in an extremely dangerous way. What's a fumarole? Well, it acts like a true hotline between scalding hot magma and the surface of our planet. We associate this kind of thing with volcanoes. But what happens with a fumarole is that a chamber of magma is created when the hot stuff is pushed upwards, making a scary looking dome on the landscape. After a time, the dome pops like a zit. Sorry for that imagery. And what's left is a geological pockmark or caldera. With the lava still flowing and various gases in the mix, we get these amazing colours through geochemistry. Another name for a fumarole is a thermal basin, which sounds a lot more civilised. People also refer to them as thermal pools. That sounds cooler, however there's nothing cool about a fumarole. If you're not careful, they will burn you to a crisp. Number 4. Giant's Causeway County Antrim in Northern Ireland features the most magical piece of geology on our list. The famous Giant's Causeway is so called because of Finn McCool. He wasn't a giant, but a medieval warrior chieftain. And in case you're thinking Finn McCool sounds a lot like a cartoon dog, his alternative handle is Fionn McCamel. Either way, he's a formidable opponent. Yet even warriors bite off more than they can chew. And that's just what Finn is believed to have done when he took on the giant Benandoner. This hulking great dude had Ireland in his sights, so Finn decided to hurl bits of the coastline into the water, thus making a crazy looking causeway or road so he could reach Benandona. This didn't work out too well, with Finn McCool beating a retreat and being chased by his enemy. Mrs McCool then tricked the angry Scottish giant, scaring him off by pretending her husband was a giant baby with a humongous daddy. That's just the explanation for tourists anyhow. If you're after something more level-headed, then scientists believe the causeway was formed by lava from a volcano. This was then cooled by the sea, where it settled into a collection of columns. Over 40,000 of them, no less. Number 3. Kalawea Volcano Found in the Pacific Ocean, on the so-called Big Island of Hawaii, Kilauea is one fiery little shield volcano. What's a shield volcano? It's where a continuous flow of fluid lava creates a volcano with a low, shield-like shape. Part of Kalawea has been erupting for several decades, meaning that the majority of the outside is made up of new lava. Well, it's several hundred years old, which is young in ancient volcano terms. This action-packed place is a tourist destination and has been drawing visitors since the early 19th century. It has a 3 by 5 km caldera formed approximately 1,500 years ago. The mighty crater of Halamaumau is said to be home to the fire goddess of Pele. Such is the power of Kalawea, its constant spewing of lava has changed the shape of the coastline, as well as swept away property. 
how much longer can this volcano keep churning out the hot sauce? It doesn't show any signs of running out just yet. The spectacle is amazing, but also pretty hazardous. Number 2. Mount Roraima Natives of the area think that Mount Roraima is the stump of a mighty tree that once held all the fruits and most vegetables in the world. They also believe that it was knocked down by Makuaima, the trickster god. This is the beginning of life as we know it, as when the tree crashed on the ground, life was released. From the top, the mountains look like they're floating on clouds, but from the bottom, you'll see they are so steep you can't imagine climbing them. Mount Roraima is the planet's greatest tipui, raising 9,000 feet above the rainforest. It's made from sandstone, pure quartz sandstone to be precise, and the epic site straddling Venezuela, Brazil, and Guyana is thought to have stood there for approximately 2 billion years. Rain is just part of life here, with a consistent stream of the wet stuff hammering down on top of the mountain. That in turn creates waterfalls. Roraima plays host to the tallest waterfall on record, Angel Falls. You'll need to set aside a few days if you want to venture up to the summit, though be careful if you do. Not just because of the high altitude, the plants on Tapui are carnivorous. Okay, we're exaggerating a little here perhaps. But if you're thinking this sounds like something out of a movie, you'd be right. Many say that Mount Roraima inspired the Hallelujah Mountains of Pandora in Avatar. Pixar was greatly inspired by Mount Roraima for scenes in their film Up. And Sir Arthur Conan Doyle wouldn't have introduced readers to the Lost World had he not heard about the mysterious site of this geological colossus. Number 1. Tibetan Plateau Our last pick is arguably the most awesome. This mighty plateau in western China holds the region of Tibet and is populated by over 4 million people. Living at a height of 16,400 feet, there's few people that are hardier than the Tibetans, who have faced both environmental and political hardship over the decades. The area is known as the roof of the world. As for how it came to be there in the first place, the honest answer is that nobody knows. This is an origin even we can't explain, but there are a lot of educated guesses out there. The longest standing theory is that 50 million years ago, or thereabouts, the plateau was dramatically realised when the Indian subcontinent and Eurasia did the geological equivalent of rubbing up against each other. However it happened, the Tibetan plateau is one of the most distinctive and deeply spiritual places on earth. In a way, it's a beautiful, natural mystery, better left unsolved. Thanks for watching, there are plenty more places that are amazing, so let me know if you'd like to see a part 2. Number 20. Pale Spear-Nosed Bats Colonies of 400 individuals spend the day roosting in caves or hollow trees. Found in countries of South and Central America, this omnivorous species is unique because much of their diet is comprised of pollen, flowers and nectar. Some people think they play an important role in pollinating endemic tree species. They display a long, spear-like structure that projects from their face, and that inspires the common name. Number 19. Eastern Red Bats You'll find these small critters widespread throughout North America and Bermuda. Its entire body is covered in dense fur, which ranges from brick red to a rusty coloration. They often fall prey to crows or blue jays, which hide under leaf piles before ambushing them. Eastern Red Bats also have a bad habit of flying into cars and into taller, human-made structures like wind turbines. Number 18. Ghost-Faced Bats The common name refers to their odd-looking face, which has flaps of skin hanging from it. A smashed-in appearance results from an underdeveloped nose and large ears that seemingly connect over their forehead. Their range includes Guatemala, Mexico, and Texas. Number 17. Virginia Big-Eared Bats True to their common name, these animals are identified by their large ears, which are more than 1 inch long, 2.6 centimetres. They're so long that they reach back about half the length of their body. Weighing some 12 grams, they're the largest cave-dwelling bats known within their range, from Virginia to North Carolina and Kentucky. They're year-round cave dwellers that only leave at night to forage for food. As insectivores, they actually do humans a favour by hunting down harmful species. Unfortunately, they're sensitive to human presence, along with loud noises and bright lights. They've been listed as endangered since the late 1970s, 
about 20,000 of these bats are estimated to exist. Number 16. Wrinkle-Faced Bats The Latin name for this bat is Centurio Senex and basically refers to a 100-year-old person. It's a reference to the animal's appearance, which many have compared to the weathered features of a centenarian. The unusual look results from a skin mask that covers their face, along with skin flaps used as pouches to store fruit. Found in Central America, this species isn't known to interact often with humans. That's good because it's said to have a fearsome bite force, given its size. Number 15. California Leaf-Nosed Bats A fleshy growth of skin called a nose leaf protrudes above its nose, which accounts for the common name. They can be found throughout deserts of the southwestern US and Mexico. Since desert climates are its natural habitat, these animals don't migrate, nor do they hibernate. They're notable for their impressive maneuverability while flying, and for their large ears which measure about 1 inch, 2.5 centimetres. They also have some voracious appetites. A colony of these bats can gobble up 250,000 pounds, 113 metric tons of insects, in a single night. Number 14. Karmazotes The name of this deity translates as death bat in the language of the Maya. In ancient Mesoamerica, the animals were strongly linked to night and death. According to Maya mythology, Karmazotes was half bat, half man, which has led to many references about a version of Batman that existed more than 2,000 years ago. Details about this figure remain sketchy, but he was thought to live inside a cave within the underworld. Paleontologists speculate that the legend of Karmazotes may have been inspired by a creature that existed in the region thousands of years ago. Fossils of a leaf-nosed bat that lived in Central America indicated the extinct creature would have been the largest vampire bat ever known to exist. Many historians say that earlier mentions of a bat-like death god appeared in the mythology of the Sapotec civilization. We'll take a look at that one later on in the episode. Number 13. Ghost Bats That nickname is so cool that we've found it's been appropriated by two bat species. But they're unrelated, and they occur on opposite sides of the world. The subject of this segment is found in Northern Australia, to which they are endemic. They're recognised as the only bats down under that will prey on animals larger than themselves. These bats will ambush fair-sized vertebrates like birds and reptiles, in addition to their fellow mammals. They rest during daylight hours, then leave in pairs at sunset to commence hunting. The ghost bat's large ears allow it to hear prey rustling on the ground. Along with their hearing, the animals use echolocation and their keen eyesight to target their victims. Number 12. Northern Ghost Bats This genus of flying mammals occurs throughout Trinidad and Central and South America. The insectivorous animals are noted for their completely white fur, which may have helped inspire the nickname. There's still much that's unknown about these animals because they're infrequently captured but researchers have documented that these ghost bats make a singing sound while they feed. The sounds are thought to be unique to this genus. Number 11. Fijian Monkey-Faced Bat Weighing less than 1 pound, 362 grams, these animals are endemic to an island of Fiji in the South Pacific. They were initially lumped together within a genus known as monkey-faced bats, but now they're thought to be more closely related to fruit-eating megabats like flying foxes. Did you know that only six of these animals have ever been observed? Number 10. Hoary Bats The word hoary refers to hair that is greyish-white. This species is identified by a dense, dark coat that is frosted with white tips on the hairs, so the adjective is sound. They're found throughout North and South America, with a few showing up in Hawaii and the Galapagos Islands. While they can be solitary critters, these bats are hardcore, long-distance migrants. After wintering in Central America, they'll migrate north to Canada. Unfortunately, those migrations can occur in steep losses for these bats. They're often killed by wind turbines that are mistaken for trees they can rest in. Number 9. Arbo Bat Vespa bats are insectivorous microbats, and this species can be found in areas of Central and West Africa. They inhabit tropical or subtropical forests, but not much is known about the size of their population, which is presumed to be large. Many people are intrigued by their dense covering of yellowish-grey fur. Number 8. 
Desert Long-Eared Bats True to their name, these bats usually occur in regions that are extremely barren and arid in the Middle East and North Africa. And their ears are indeed large, measuring more than 1.5 inches, 40 millimeters long, with near horizontal alignment. These bats employ echolocation to detect prey, which is often scorpions. Researchers say that scorpions often strike the bats, but the venom seems to have little, if any, toxic effect on this species. Number 7. Greater Bulldog Bats That's a colourful nickname for a species which belongs to a family known as fishing bats. By using echolocation, these bats can detect ripples on the water made by fish. The prey is scooped up by a pouch between its legs, and the bat's sharp claws keep it from escaping. These large flying mammals are found from Mexico to Argentina around streams and coastal lagoons. The bulldog name is a reference to their facial features, which are thought to resemble the dog breed. Number 6. Pygmy Pipistrelli As the name indicates, they're classified as microbats and measure about 2 inches long, 5.2 centimeters. They range over most of continental Europe and into regions of Africa and Asia. In the UK, they're one of the most common and abundant bat species. If you're wondering about the name Pipistrelli, it's derived from an Italian word that means bat. Number 5. Hammer-headed bats While it kind of looks like a Photoshop creation, you can find this animal in equatorial Africa, where it favours swamps and forests at elevations approaching 5,900 feet, or 1,800 metres. Weighing about 16 ounces, or 450 grams, this is the largest bat species native to Africa, and has a wingspan of 38 inches, or 97 centimetres. Their distinctively shaped heads inspire the common name, but experts say the males have larger noggins, which enables them to blast loud mating calls that sound like honking noises. Number 4. The Sarpotec Bat God Earlier, we mentioned Karmazotes, the ancient Mesoamerican bat god, but that wasn't the only one, nor the earliest. The indigenous Zapotec civilization dated to around 700 BC and flourished in present-day southern Mexico. When archaeologists were excavating a tomb in the ancient city ruins of Monte Alban, they found an unexpected treasure. A strange mask had been crafted from 25 pieces of jade, which was highly valued by Mesoamerican civilizations. While there was disagreement over the mask's purpose, there was a near unanimous agreement on what it represented. It was meant to portray a bat. Because the animals inhabited caves, temples and tombs, they were thought to be connected to the world of the dead, where ancestral spirits roamed. The bat god was also represented in a form resembling jaguars. Funeral urns bearing that likeness have been found that date to at least 300 AD. Number 3. Fringe-lipped bats Experts have noted that this animal has no known fossils, and it's the only species within its genus. Ranging from Mexico to Brazil, their lips and muzzle display wart-like bumps, which inspire their nickname. While they mainly eat insects and fruit, they are also known to prey on other bats as well. Number 2. Kitty's Hognosed Bat This one is also known as a bumblebee bat due to its small size. Weighing less than 1 ounce, about 2 grams, they measure only 1.3 inches long, that's 33 millimetres. Those diminutive dimensions make it the smallest known species of bats. Some sources also claim it's the world's smallest mammal as well, although that's still being debated. They occur in limestone caves of Myanmar and Thailand. In the latter country, they're found only in a single province. In 2019, their population was estimated to be in a downward trend. Just a quick time out to remind you to like and subscribe to our channel. Now, let's head to our top bat. Number 1. Spectacled Flying Foxes These megabats are found in Australia, New Guinea and various offshore islands. With a head and body length of nearly 10 inches, 25 centimetres, they can weigh more than 2 pounds, or 1 kilogram. You probably know that they're named for their facial resemblance to foxes. This species has pale fur that circles their eyes like spectacles. While many sources regard these critters as unthreatened, the Australian government differs. They listed the flying foxes as an endangered species after some 20,000 of them died during severe heatwaves in Queensland in 2018. 
Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button and click the bell for notifications for our next exciting episode right here on Epic Wildlife.